So after winning an NBA title, the Cleveland Cavaliers are heading into the 2016-2017 NBA season with a lot of unanswered questions. Is LeBron going to stay in Cleveland or will he decide to take his talents elsewhere? What about J.R. Smith, a free agent this offseason? On the other hand, the Cavaliers' young point guard and Kyrie Irving is still under contract for many years to come and they plan to build around him. As for Kevin Love, we really don't know what's in store for his future. Will the Cavs trade him? Will they keep him? And can the Cavaliers repeat as NBA champions? So as you guys saw from the title of this video, we will be rebuilding the 2016-2017 Cleveland Cavaliers. Now obviously, this team just won a title, so they don't need that much rebuilding, but my goal for this episode and for this rebuilding series is to win a championship with the Cleveland Cavaliers once again. So we gotta start things off with a huge trade, a trade you would never expect. LeBron James for Stephen Curry? What? No, but in all honesty, I decided to trade Kevin Love first. Obviously, I don't know if the Cavs will trade him in real life. Only time will obviously tell. But I decided that we will end up trading Kevin Love, trying to find a player who fits a little bit better in the Cleveland Cavaliers scheme. So my first option was looking at Boston. I was trying to get a combo deal. Maybe send like Avery Bradley, Jay Crowder, maybe like a Kelly Olynyk for Kevin Love and a draft pick or two. I tried to do this trade, it just wasn't working out, and in the long run, I decided that Boston wasn't the best trading partner to get rid of Kevin Love because none of the trades were going through. Then I decided to hit up Milwaukee and offer a trade that would send Kevin Love and a lot of draft picks to Milwaukee for Greg Monroe and Michael Carter-Williams. Now, I thought this was a great trade because Michael Carter-Williams is a great point guard to have behind Kyrie as a backup, and Greg Monroe can kind of play that center role, which will shift Tristan Thompson down to the power forward, and I feel like he'll be a better fit than having Kevin Love and Tristan Thompson uh, both starting in the front court. Now, obviously, Milwaukee won't give away two young players like this that easily, so I decided to maybe shop around Kevin Love one more time. I ended up finding this trade right here, Greg Monroe and Taj Gibson. I uh, decided to just skip over it for now, come back a little bit later. I also see Mike Conley and Zach Randolph, but then I realized... This is practically the exact same trade as the Michael Carter-Williams and um, Greg Monroe trade, but Mike Conley and Zach Randolph are a little bit older, and I want to get a little bit younger with this trade for Kevin Love. And so I'm, I decided to try again, try to get uh, these Milwaukee, this Milwaukee duo again in Greg Monroe and Michael Carter-Williams. So this time I've decided to throw in Kevin Love, um, a first-round draft pick, and... Sasha Khan, but that trade ended up not working out as you see right here. We've got the 2017 Cavaliers first round, our 2016 pick, which is the actually the 30th pick in the draft, and a Clippers second round pick. That trade would end up falling through, but they ended up offering a counter offer right here. So Kevin Love, 2016 first round pick, 2017 first round pick, and Sasha Khan for Taj Gibson, Michael Carter Williams, and Greg Monroe. So taking a look at the new Cavaliers roster, the team is looking pretty good right here. Kyrie, Greg Monroe, Michael Carter Williams, T Taj Gibson, they all fit in pretty well on this team. So now let's head right into the NBA draft. As you can see, the Sixers, the Lakers, and the Celtics all have the number one, two, and three pick in the draft, which is pretty insane. We had the 30th pick, which we ended up trading. So we got to try to trade up in this draft, but Ben Simmons, no surprise there, ends up going number one in the draft. So I decided to trade Taj Gibson right here, or at least shop him around a little bit, see what I can get for him. So taking a look at the trade finder right here for Taj Gibson, we see a trade for Carl Landry, Bobby Portis. I mean, honestly, I just want to trade up in this draft. That's my main goal. I could get DeAndre Jordan, but we just picked up Greg Monroe, so that doesn't make too much sense. But I just want to get a pick that's a little bit higher in the draft that can bring in a nice young player for this roster. And none of these trades are looking too intriguing, but we see this trade right here from the San Antonio Spurs that they offer a 2017 first round pick and a 2018 first round pick for Taj Gibson. That's a great trade for both teams in my opinion. We get two first round picks and the Spurs get a nice big veteran to play alongside that championship squad. So right as soon as I did that trade, I decided to shop the picks around one more time, try to get the Hawks pick in the draft. And they weren't taking it, they were being a little stingy at first. But after playing around with it for a little bit, we ended up getting this trade to go through. So it was a 2017 first round pick, 2018 first round pick, and a 2017 second round Timberwolves pick and a Clippers pick for um, two Hawks first round picks and a Heat second round pick right there. As you guys can see the trade right there. So they would end up accepting it. This would move us up in the draft, which would really help us out. As you can see, the Lakers end up selecting Brandon Ingram with the second overall pick in the draft. Now with the third pick, the Celtics ended up taking Buddy Heald, which is actually a pretty good pick for them. I actually prefer Buddy Heald over Jalen Brown, the guy they actually took in real life. But talking about the draft is complete is a complete different episode. But Buddy Heald was a great pick, great shooter for the Boston Celtics. 
So we got the 20th pick in the draft from Atlanta, and um, once again, just trying to shop it around a little bit, either get a player, maybe trade even higher up in the draft, and nothing here is looking too great once again. These trade offers aren't always the best. We do see Marco Bellinelli, who would be a nice shooter for the Cavaliers, because we really do need a three-point shooter on this team. I mean, we brought in Michael Carter-Williams. He's not really a shooter. Um, we, I mean, we, we have J.R. Smith. He's a free agent, but we might, we might be able to get him back. But taking a look at the prospects right here, um, it is the 20th pick in the draft, and Deontay Davis is still available. Scrolling down even further, we see that Malik Beasley is still available. He is a better shooter than a couple other of the shooting guards in this draft, and I feel like he'd be a great pick for this team. We also see some other big guys like Shaq Diallo. Um, I believe we saw we see Kay Felder. That was the guy that saw the Cavs actually took in real life. But this is the second round right here, Marcus Page. He's a player that I want to kind of draft probably later in the second round. So we'll probably trade um, a pick to get Marcus Page. We, th we see Thon Maker ended up getting drafted pretty early in the draft, just like real life. But um, it seems like Malik Beasley will probably be the pick for this draft. So I actually decided to trade down in the draft since Malik Beasley will probably be like a late first round pick. So we ended up trading down to the 25th pick, and once again, just viewing the trade offers from other teams, Malik Beasley is still available, so he'll most likely be the pick uh, for the Cavaliers with the 25th pick in the draft. We see Marco Bellinelli once again. I was actually really interested in getting him, but I feel like maybe bringing in a younger guy is probably a better bet and a better investment in the long run than bringing in Marco Bellinelli. So with the 25th pick in the draft, taking a look at the scouting, I mean... We can see that Malik Beasley is the best available player. We're also looking at this player from universe, from the University of Virginia, but at the end of the day, we ended up taking Malik Beasley with the 25th pick in the draft. Now skipping to our second pick in the draft in round two, we ended up taking Marcus Page with pick 39 here in the second round. So these are our rookies that we drafted, as you guys just saw, Malik Beasley and Marcus Page. I feel like these two guys would be great additions to the team. We are actually aren't going to sign Marcus Page quite yet. Uh, we'll probably bring him back maybe when the Summer League happens, but LeBron James accepts his player option. Mo Williams declines, but it's all good. As long as we get LBJ back, we'll be we'll be okay. So DeMar DeRozan declines, Pau Gasol declines, and a couple other good players design, um, decline, I should say. So LBJ, Kyrie, Greg Monroe, the new big three with Tristan Thompson. J.R. Smith, his contract is up, so hopefully we can get him back in the offseason. But the roster is looking even better than they did when they won the title. So J.R. Smith, testing free agency, Massimo Modella, Vadova, Mozgov, James Jones, and Dante Jones. So we decided to offer Amir Johnson a contract. I feel like he'd be a great backup power forward to Greg Monroe and Tristan Thompson. Um, I feel like he fits great with the team, a nice rebounder, a nice defender, a nice player for this team. So we'll offer him a two-year, $5 million contract. He ended up declining it, so we got to obviously bump up it, bump up the contract a little bit, and we offered him. So he would end up accepting the deal, same with Delhi, and Marcus Page will accept as well. So we were able to bring back J.R. Smith, Della Vadova, and a couple other guys as well. So this is the roster heading in to the 2016-2017 NBA season, LeBron James. Kyrie Irving, Greg Monroe, Tristan Thompson, J.R. Smith, Della Vadova, Shumpert, Fry, Michael Carter-Williams is down there somewhere. I feel like we've got a great team right here. We also ended up picking up Matt Barnes and um, uh, veteran center Brendan Haywood, as you guys will see here in a little bit. So I feel like this team is much improved more than last year. Obviously, getting rid of Kevin Love and picking up uh, Monroe and Michael Carter-Williams. They had some depth to a really stacked team. So, taking a look at the Los Angeles Lakers, as you can see, they did pick up Brandon Ingram. And they've got a nice young core with Russell, Randall, Clarkson, and uh, Ingram. Taking a look at the new-look Bucks, Anton DeCumpo and Kevin Love. And as you guys can see, our first game of the 2016-2017 NBA season has to be against Kevin Love and the Milwaukee Bucks. Hopefully we can take this one for him. As you can see, we just jumped into the sim cast and uh, we are up a decent score right here. And we start pulling away in the third quarter after going on a 15-0 run. We would end up going on and winning this game against the Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, Kevin Love finally has a chance to, you know, be a star again in Milwaukee. But the new look Bucks would end up losing their first game together. But as you guys can see, the Cavaliers winning their first game. After simulating to the All-Star break, we are 45-7. and seven, Just insane right there. Number one in the Eastern Conference. Uh, the Celtics are number two. The Pacers are number three. And as you guys can see, Kevin Love and the Bucks are 
indeed number five. So let's take a quick look at some of the player stats and the league leaders really quickly. As you guys can see, LeBron James leading all scores for the Cavs. No surprise there with Kyrie Irving behind him. Greg Monroe averaging a nice 15 points per game. J.R. Smith doing what he does best, putting the ball in the basket. Same with Shannon Fry. Malik Beasley surprising everybody, averaging 10.4 points off the bench. Gotta love his production right there. Michael Carter Williams not having the greatest of seasons, but a uh, great uh, point guard to have along with Delhi and Kyrie and Marcus Page as well. So as you guys can see at the rookie report, Ben Simmons leading all rookies in points. Not really too much of a surprise there with Ingram right behind him. Jamal Murray at number three, Valentine number four, and uh, as you guys can see, you guys want to pause, you guys can go back and look that. Uh, as for the MVP race, LeBron and Kyrie both number two at number four spot. Hopefully LeBron can win another MVP. That would be great. Ben Simmons, number one for Rookie of the Year. Rudy Gobert, number one for Defensive Player. And D'Angelo Russell, number one for Most Improved. As you guys can see, the All-Star participants, no surprise once again, Kyrie and LeBron become All-Stars, but Ben Simmons also gets his first All-Star appearance. And at the end of the season, Westbrook would end up winning the MVP. Simmons would win Rookie of the Year. Knight would win uh, six man Rudy Gobert wins defensive player of the year and Jeff Withy wins the most improved and we Tyron Lewis a winning coach of the year as we finish 69 and 13 here in this season um trading Kevin Lowe is probably one of the best things to happen to this team even though he is a great player but LeBron James would make the all-nba first team as well as the all-nba defensive team and uh, Kyrie would make the all-nba third team so we finished 69 and 13 with the additions of Greg Monroe and Michael Carter Williams in the first round, we end up playing Carmelo Anthony and his New York Knicks. Hopefully, they can uh, maybe take a game for us. Highly doubt it, though. 69-13, just a ridiculous record right there. We win the Eastern Conference by 23 games. That's just ridiculous. And as you guys can see, Oklahoma ends up going 64-18 and with uh, Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. So taking a look at the player stats at the end of the season for the Cavaliers, LeBron would lead all scores with 23 Pretty good stats right there and Kyrie right behind him. But as for Milwaukee, look at these numbers from Kevin Love. 21 points, 11 rebounds. Finally, Kevin Love is a star uh, playing for Milwaukee. And they ended up clicking the third seed in the Eastern Conference. Pretty impressive if you had to ask me. But Matthew Delvadova is going to be injured for this series. Doesn't matter. We would end up winning 4-1 to to the New York Knicks. So taking on Ben Simmons and the Philadelphia 76ers in the next round. We're going to go ahead and simulate the current round. So game one, we... I believe we win, as you see, we, have, yeah, we end up winning game one. Game two, we win. Game three, we win. And game four, Ben Simmons ends up clutching that out. But we ended up winning 4-1 once again. Uh, now we're taking on the Detroit Pistons in the West Eastern Conference Finals, I should say. We win the first two games. Can we win the third? We end up losing game three. As for game four, Matthew Delavadova finally healthy again. We win game four and we win game five. So we literally went 4-1 in every single series. But we are in the NBA Finals. Now we have, we're either going to take on Kevin Durant and the Thunder or Curry and the Warriors. And we end up taking Steph Curry and the Warriors. A rematch for the third year in a row, as you guys can see. Clay Thompson just went off in the playoffs, averaging 27.5 points, Curry averaging 25.7, and Solinger right behind them, but LeBron James averaging uh, 25 himself, Kyrie with 19, Monroe with 18. We end up winning game one right there. As for game two, we lose game two. Game three, we lose game three. Game four, we end up losing as well. So, can the Cavaliers come back from the impossible once again, down three to one? To the Golden State Warriors and as you guys can see here in game number five we have the lead in the second quarter make that the lead in the third quarter we end up pulling away right here as you guys will see um, it was a close one in the third quarter but that this fourth quarter the Cavs start pulling away end up clutching out the win and they will take the game five victory making the series 3-2 in favor of the Golden State Warriors. LeBron James does what he does best in elimination games. Goes off, has a near triple double, 35 points, 13 rebounds, and 9 assists. So game number six, back in back at the Oracle. Michael Carter Williams does get injured, but we do have Della Vadova and Marcus Page. So no big deal right there. As you guys can see, the the Warriors do have the lead in the uh, second quarter. But it was all good. As you guys can see here in the third quarter, the Cavaliers pull away once 
again another blowout in this series and the Cavaliers will win in convincing fashion taking the game 133 to 102 LeBron James another historic game 37 13 and 11 LeBron James is going off what he does best another triple double as Kyrie has 33 and 15 and Greg Monroe has 21 and 12 I mean two amazing three amazing stat lines right there for the Cleveland Cavaliers so now we're going to a game seven can the Cleveland Cavaliers accomplish the impossible once again so jumping into the simulation for game number seven, we are at the Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland, Ohio, and here in the first quarter, the Cavaliers have a nice eight-point lead. The Warriors coming back in the second quarter. The Cavs end up pulling away. They are up. They were up about ten points at halftime. Now here we go. The Cavaliers are starting to blow out the Warriors. They're about to do the impossible once again. Coming back from being down three to one, as you guys can see here, the Cavaliers up by 23 points. Bringing in Greg Monroe, bringing in Michael Carter Williams, bringing in a solid bench core with players like Matt Barnes and many other guys. What a great fit for this team. And as you guys can see here, the Cavaliers come back from being down 3 1 to win this series 4 to 3 in game number 7 at Quicken Loans Arena to become back to back champion. Just tremendous. Well, they did it, and as they celebrate, you can just see the relief, the exhilaration that comes with winning it all. And Clark, you have to hand it to the entire organization. They work together to get right here. And guys, what a reward for the fan base. I mean, I know one thing, they're going to enjoy this memory for a long, long time. And we have enjoyed our time with you folks all season long. This is Kevin Harlan saying so long. Have a wonderful summer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it was a lot of fun to make, and Kevin. It turns out that Kevin, trading Kevin Love was probably the best thing that ever happened to this team. Kyrie had 27, uh, LeBron had 26, and Greg Monroe had 26 as well. So if you guys want to see me rebuild the 2017-2018 Cleveland Cavaliers, leave a like on this video and let me know in the comment section down below. But taking a look at the championship roster, LeBron's happy, Kyrie's happy, Greg Monroe's happy, this entire team is happy. But if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. And uh, I'll see you guys pretty soon.